In terms of like system trends in general, where do you see things going that are positive and what kind of things have you seen going on that are, you know, negative and going the wrong direction? Yeah. So I think um there's we could talk all day about answers to that question, but I think a few of the big things that we need to think about um in pretty much all of the healthcare professions is that we are having um a, a very hard time replacing the clinical hours of people retiring out of practice. So there's a few reasons for that. I think people are just less interested in working 70 or 80 hours a week the way some of the, you know, older practitioners were in general. I think also we're having a large increase in in women in all of these professions that we didn't have before, with the exception of nursing has always been um, mostly a female workforce, but women are now most of the graduating classes is is slightly more than 50%. And the healthcare workforce is about 80% women. But when women get out into practice, they're less likely to work full time. So if you look at some of the um, studies that have been done around workforce management, we know like physicians in Canada, I think it works out to some, and don't quote me on it, but I think it works out to something like for every retiring physician, you need to graduate two and a half new physicians to make up the same number of clinical hours. And a lot of it is because older physicians worked more, but also um, the younger physicians and primarily the female physicians don't work full time. And part of the reason that they're not working full time is because the rest of our system is broken and we don't have the type of childcare that we need to support you on a Wednesday night when you're working a shift in hospital, right? Or to keep your clinic open on a weekend to serve the patients that really need to be seen. Bankers hours doesn't work in healthcare for everybody, um, but we need, we need solutions. The reason people care a lot about working Monday to Friday and that like lifestyle healthcare jobs um, is because they don't have an alternative. And so we we have to do better from a systems perspective to support people that are working in healthcare, and we don't have that right now. Um, so I'm I'm hoping we see some shifts in that space. Um, I'm glad to see more women, but we're not seeing them working to their full capacity, um, not always by choice. Some things that are going well, and we could probably have like a healthy debate about scope changes for other professions um, as well. Um, I think that is positive but complicated. Um, I think that we have uh, a lot of interesting rules and turf wars and emotions wrapped up in how that's going. So while I think overall it's positive, we've got to get through these complexities and and all of the difficulties and disagreements that are happening and figure out how we can start working together better um, instead of having these kind of like conflicts and, and turf wars. Um, over what people are doing. So I think we can do it really well. We're not doing it very well right now. I, I see the scope changes as an interesting side of it, right? Because there's like infinite patient demand, right? It's literally limitless. And then you've got, okay, well, how can we get more people doing more things, tackling more of the problem? So like when you look at it from that perspective on the macro level, I think it makes a lot of sense. But then, yeah, when you yeah. consider it more from that, like, individual like okay well who's going to be cutting into my revenue who's going to be taking my job who's going to be doing my xyz right and so right now definitely in alberta the pharmacist scope of practice is i think one of the highest across the country you know historically there's sort of been like a little bit of a uh, in battle between the rns here and the lpns here in the province is the lpns here have again one of the largest scopes across all of canada and I think Alberta is actually one of the last places where the RNs and the LPNs don't have a single uh, union representing both groups. And I think it's largely because of that, like, you know, uh oh, uh, there's encroachment going on in territory here. And it yeah. winds up being tough, right? Because then the advocacy side starts to like suffer. Patient care is starting to get more uh, fragmented. So I don't know. The scope change, I think, makes a lot of sense. But like you mentioned, it's complex. It is complex. And I think like every time I hear someone get really fired up about it on either side kind of of the argument, they there's not a lot of people talking critically about the complexities of doing these things. So for, I mean, a very obvious example would be scope and, and minor ailment or self-limiting conditions moving into pharmacies. Um, 
I, I think that's great. I think there's a lot of really complicated pieces around it, though. And when you talk to the people who have their boots on the ground, we haven't got all of those pieces figured out in a way that really supports them. So like it would be, you know, a lot of pharmacists, especially younger pharmacists, really want to be more clinical. And they're saying, like, throw all of these scope changes at me. I love it. We don't have the support staff to support them and take away all of their other traditional functions. So then they end up overworked, right, and burning out. Um, or we have postings that we're not filling. Um, there, there's a huge labor shortage in all of these professions right now. So although it would be great for, you know, a lot of pharmacists would think it was great to be able to take on more of that expanded scope, where we're going to find the pharmacists to do all of that is a whole nother question that we're not talking enough about, right? And similarly, like in medicine, we're starting to see more and more conversations every day, not a ton, but still more and more conversations about some physicians wanting to move outside of public billing, right? And saying, I'm going to open a private practice. I'm going to give up my right to bill publicly. I want to do this. But then we're not hearing the same people talk about, you know, well, are you really ready to start dealing with insurers? Because that's um, a luxury that family physicians haven't had to deal with to date. And it is a nightmare. And if you talk to people in industries that are constantly dealing with insurance companies and audits and getting clawbacks and all of the complexities around the administrative work with dealing with insurance companies, the grass isn't always greener. Right. So it's just people are really emotional. They're very opinionated, but they're not always very educated on every one of these issues. And, and it's I struggle to um, kind of stay, stay calm when I'm reading, you know, whether it's some rant on LinkedIn or an article in the newspaper, because it really feels like they're not seeing both sides of the story. So whatever controversial issue we want to come up with in healthcare, I think we just really need to be good at, again, thinking critically and using those problem solving skills and those diverse um, communication skills where we're really understanding the perspectives from all different sides of the table on whatever issue of the day is so that we can really understand the complexities around it and figure out how to deal with them. We're missing that piece. And I, I think it's because we were never trained that way, honestly, to, to think that way. I'm Dr. Jordan Valrath, and you've been watching Cherry Live, brought to you by Cherry Health. Please like and subscribe to see more clips like this or check us out at www.cherry.health, Canada's medical network. Thank you.